Turning your Bibles to Galatians chapter 2, we're continuing our study of Paul's letter to the churches of Galatia. It's a group that, a place that he went on his first missionary journey, different churches. He actually led people to Christ and formed churches and then came back. And he is proclaiming in this, in this letter, he is making sure they understand the grace message of salvation. Uh, in fact, this morning we see Paul stand for the grace message. He says, justification is by faith and not by works. As we think about the passage, we see that salvation, that justification is by faith and not by works. We know that there were some issues after Paul left and had given them a clear message. A group of people had come in and told them that it was more to it than believing in Christ. You had to keep the Mosaic law. You had to do all these things. So Paul is writing to defend that. As we look in this section, we want to be encouraged that we would stand for the grace of God, that we would share our faith clearly and make sure people understand that salvation is a gift by faith in Christ. In this section, we have been seeing Paul confronting Peter. And I remember, you got to think about this. Peter is the main apostle. That's how he's looked at. He was with Jesus. He's the one who stood on the day of Pentecost. He's done everything right. He comes up to see Paul in Antioch and gets and falls away in the sense that, that here was Jews and Gentiles eating together and enjoying everything, and some Jewish Christians come, and Peter, instead of wanting to sit with the Gentiles, actually gets up and acts like he shouldn't be sitting with Gentiles. And then the message is confused. Is salvation by faith? Do you have to come under the Mosaic law to be saved? Do you have to come under the law to, to, to try to live the Christian life? Things get so confused, and Paul stands before everyone there and confronts Peter about this issue. And this is what we're going to see this morning when Paul writes and says in verse 15, we are Jews by nature. He's talking to Peter, and we'll see it as we go through. As we continue this morning, we're going to focus on two big areas. We're going to see that justification is by faith and not by works, and we're going to see the purpose of the law. Now, it's important that we talk about those two things. Because justification is to be declared right before God. To be right before God is by faith. It is not by works. We in this church would say, well, of course that's right. We all know you believe in Jesus Christ. You have eternal life. It's by grace through faith. But there are a lot of people that we deal with that don't hold to that. And they think it's more than believing in Christ. The second thing about the purpose of the law, why did God give the Mosaic law? What, it was for the Jewish people. How does the law relate to us? And we'll see a little bit more of that as we go through the passage this morning. I was sitting in a restaurant with two or three people. It's been, uh, it's been a couple of years ago. And the topic came up about getting to God, so to speak. How does one get to God? There was a girl at the table, and she said, well, if you think about it, here's my conclusion. This is what she said. Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, they're all the same. Man must do good things, try to do good things to others, good, good things to God, and then that would please God. So man lives a life of doing good, and then they please his God. I stopped her right there. I said, wait a minute. There's some truth to what you said. It is the truth that religions, such as Islam or Buddhism, are systems set up where a man does something hoping to get to God. But Christianity is totally different. Man does not do anything to get to God. Man comes by faith, taking God at his word concerning Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. See, religion is man trying to please God. That's man trying to do something to get to God. Why, true Christianity is God pleasing God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, it's not what we do to get to God. It's what God has already done for us. We come to God as we receive the gift of eternal life. The Bible calls this good news, not good works. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The good news is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. As we continue in our study of Paul's letter to the churches of Galatia, Paul did not want them to be confused concerning the message of salvation and even concerning the message of the Christian life. And last time we saw that Paul had to confront Peter face to face in front of the church. That was an amazing thing. Peter had put himself back under the law. He was actually acting like... Uh, 
Gentile Christians weren't as good as Jewish Christians, and maybe these Gentile Christians weren't even Christians because they haven't come under the Mosaic law. So there's all kind of confusion. So as we continue this morning, we're going to see Paul confronts Peter on the whole issue of salvation. In fact, th these verses that we're going to see in the, not only this week but next week really puts together the whole rest of the book. I want to show you what I mean. In verses 15 through 19, which is this morning, he talks about his defense of salvation by faith. That's what he's going to go into the details in chapters 3 and 4 of the book of Galatians. Then in verses 20 and 21, which we won't get to this morning, but we'll talk about it a little bit, he gives the defense of the Christian life, which is by faith. That's chapters 5 and 6. So we're going to see that. In fact, let me give you this outline. This is for this morning. Salvation is by faith, and, and, and justification is by faith. That's verses 15 through 19, and we're going to see about the Jews and Gentiles are different, but salvation is the same as by faith. We're going to see what the purpose of the law is. But then next week, we, this all ties together because in verses 20 through 21, he talks about the Christian life is by faith. And it's the famous verse of Galatians 2.20, which says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith. And that's what he's talking about, the Christian life. And we'll see it as we go through that next week. So this morning we're going to see Peter has come. He's, he's, he's done wrong. He's done wrong. He's confused the message. And you know, it would be like us saying to people, it's just faith alone and Christ alone. And some other people come and say, well, it's really more than that. And then I turn back to people and say, yeah, it's probably a little bit more than that. All of a sudden I've confused the whole thing. And that's what Peter had done. And so Paul confronts him. Look at verse 14. He said, when I saw that they, Peter and those who were with him, when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas, that's Peter, in the presence of everyone. He said, I did it publicly. And then he says, if you being a Jew live like Gentiles and not like Jews, how is it that you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? Paul basically said in front of everybody to Peter, and he said, you're Jewish, but you've been living like a Gentile. How come now, when these Jews come, you want the Gentiles to live like a Jew? He said, that doesn't make any sense. Remember, Paul is speaking directly to Peter. And that's why verse 15, sometimes if you're not careful, you don't understand what he's doing. He says, we are Jews by nature and not sinners from the, mountain, the Gentiles. Paul is talking to Peter, two Jews. He says, we're Jews by nature. We're Jews by birth. We're not sinners among the Gentiles. Now, wait a minute. What, what does that mean? We talked last week, you remember that the normal Jewish person considered a Gentile a sinner in the sense that they didn't have the law, they didn't have the covenants, they didn't have all the things that God gave to the Jewish people. Jew Jewish people, when they saw Gentiles at this time, they would look at them and say, you, you, you have to deal with the Gentiles, but when you come back to your house after being around Gentiles, you better wash yourself, you better be different because these Gentiles, they're not God's people. But let me tell you the truth. Jewish people were chosen as a people group and a nation by God. They are God's chosen people, not for salvation, but for service. Salvation is always the same. It doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Gentile. It is by faith. But he said, he said we are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. I want you to understand that all Jews consider Gentiles to be sinners. Why? Think about this. They go back to Abraham. Abraham was given the land, the seed, the blessing. The land was what we call the, 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 the land of Israel. And the seed is ultimately the Messiah. And the blessing is salvation to the whole world. That's through the Jews. They got the promises. They got the blessings. They got the covenants. They got the law. And when they saw Gentiles and they said, you don't have any of those things. You're not as good as us. That's what they actually thought. You know, the truth is this, that Gentiles never had the law, went out under the law, never happened under the law. If you're a Gentile, you never were under the law. Jewish people for a time were under the law from Moses to Christ. But let me tell you something. According to Romans chapter 2, the law is written in everybody's hearts. The rights and wrongs is called the conscience. It is in every person, and every person knows right from wrong. He says, we're Jews, they're not, and, and, and we know they're sinners, However, notice verse 16, and this is the, probably one of the most famous verses in the book of Galatians and one of the famous verses in the Bible. Notice what he says. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we'd be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. 
since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. So he starts off by saying, nevertheless. Now, he says, whatever the advantage that a Jew might have, because he was God's chosen people, and they got the covenants and the blessings and all those things, Paul makes it clear that salvation is not by law, but by faith. Let's put it this way. Salvation is not by what you do. It's not if you try to live a good life. It's not if you try to join a church. It's not if you get baptized. It's not if you keep all the rules and the regulations. If you try to, salvation doesn't come that way. Salvation comes by faith in Jesus Christ. And Paul wants that to be clear, to be made known. And it is a great truth. Religion can't save you. Religion is man trying to get to God. That's what religion is. We have a relationship. Christianity is God saving us through Jesus Christ, and we have an eternal relationship with Him. And notice what he says, and look at this verse carefully. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. We need to talk a minute about justification. Justification means to be declared righteous. It means to be declared right with God. He says, knowing this, that a man is not declared right by the law. You can't get to God and be declared right by doing good things. First of all, you can't keep the law. Let me just put it that way. There were 613 commandments. If you just take the top 10, you can't keep them. In fact, most everybody's broken all 10. You say, well, no, wait a minute. I've never murdered. Have you ever hated? Jesus said, if you hate, it's the same as murder. Well, I've never committed adultery. Jesus said, if you lusted after somebody, you committed adultery. Well, I've never, I've never had an idol. If you put anything before God, that becomes an idol. I mean, uh, have you ever lied? Well, maybe once. Right? It, it doesn't matter. You've broken them all. And so you can't be justified. You can't be declared righteous by the law. No one has ever been right with God by doing the rules and things. Now, I told y'all that I thought growing up, I never went to church, but I thought that, that there's God and there's us, and that one day you're going to stand before God, and what you want to do is more good than bad, and when you stand before God, if you've done good, he'll look, if you've done more good than bad, he'll look at you and let you go to heaven. That's what I thought. I was wrong. It has nothing to do with how much good you do. If you ever sin one time, the wages of sin is what? Death. If you've ever sinned one time, you're separated from God. No matter how many goods you do. It doesn't matter if you try to keep the law or you keep the law almost all the way. You can't do it. He says nobody's justified by the works of the law. The main reason is you can't do it. You can't keep it. Galatians 3.10 says there's a curse of the law. Listen to this. I'm going to read it to you. You don't have to turn there. Galatians 3.10. For as many as are under the works of the law, if you're going to try to come under the law, then you're under the curse of the law. Here's the curse. Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to perform them. That means if you say, I'm going to try to get to God by works, you're going to have to be perfect. Law is not being good. Law is being perfect. Law is the character of God. If you've ever been wrong one time, you can't come to God by works. And that's what he says. He says, knowing that a man's not justified by the works of the law. There are people we come in contact with every day that think if you try to live a good life, somehow you can get to God. What they've missed out, it's not living a good life. It's living what? It's a perfect life. It's a perfect life. The standard is the character of God. That's what the law is. And when people seek to establish their own righteousness, they do not consider what kind of obedience that requires. It is perfect and complete in every way. John Wesley said, the law is not being good, but being perfect. James chapter 2, verse 10 said, if any man tries to keep the whole law and yet offends it in one point, you're guilty of the whole law. If you're hanging on the side of a mountain and you're hanging on a chain, how many of the links of the chain have to break for you to fall? Just one. How many sins do you have to have to be not be perfect? Just one. So he says... Nevertheless, knowing that a person, a man, is not declared right by the works of the law, but then notice, but through faith in Christ Jesus. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. It's trusting in Jesus Christ, believing that he died and rose again for us and that he gives us eternal life. See, I want you to notice something. He says, but through faith in Christ Jesus. The object is Jesus Christ. The object of our faith is Jesus 
I want you to understand, salvation doesn't come because we believe something happened or we believe. We're trusting a person. The person is Jesus. Jesus became a human being, died on the cross to pay for sin, rose again to conquer death, and offers the gift of eternal life. We are trusting in Christ for eternal life. Salvation is in the ob object of our faith is Jesus Christ. It's not the amount of faith. It's the object of our faith. I could have all my faith in Buddha. All my faith I can muster up in Buddha and I won't be saved. I can have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed in Jesus Christ and I am saved forever. A hundred and, over 160 places in the New Testament, it says we are saved by faith. So he says, nevertheless, no, you're not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. That's the key. And then he makes it personal. He says, even we, and he's talking about Peter. He says, Peter, me and you, even we have believed in Jesus Christ. We've trusted in Christ. Paul and Peter, the Jews, they had trusted in Christ. They had come to God by faith and not by the works of the law. Notice this, we, even we have believed in Christ. Why? So that we would be justified by faith. Every one of you in this room, you want to have a relationship with God? You want to spend eternity with Jesus Christ? You want to have what people say going to heaven if you want to have eternal life? It doesn't come by you trying to be good or doing anything. It comes to uh, you putting your faith in Christ for eternal life, and you are justified and declared righteous by faith in Christ. It is that simple. And that's what Paul says. You're not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ. Peter, Paul says to Peter, even we have believed in Christ, so we will be justified by the faith in Christ. And then he goes on and says, and not by the works of the law. Why? Because the works of the law, nobody could be justified. Simply put, you can't be saved by doing good. You can't be saved by keeping the law because you can't keep the law. We can't do good. We can't be perfect. In ourselves, we are helpless to be saved. By what we do, we take the gift of eternal life. Let me just say something to you. Listen to this. When you hear the truth that we're not saved by what we do, but by faith alone in Christ, this goes against nature. It goes against human nature. It goes against the flesh. Here's why. Human nature says, you don't get something for nothing. You're telling me that God has said to me, if I trust Christ, he will give me eternal life. What do I have to do? Nothing. It's a gift. Well, it can't be that easy. It can't be that simple. The second thing is human nature says, you better give people rules and laws or they'll sin. Let me ask you something. How many people do you know that live by the rules and the laws still sin? Law doesn't stop people from sinning. In fact, we're going to see in just a little bit, law causes people to sin. We'll talk more about it in just a minute when we get to it. He says, knowing that a man is not declared right before God by works... But by faith in Christ, we have believed in Christ so that we'd be justified, declared right by faith, and not by the works of the law. Why? Because with the works of the law, you can't be justified. You can't do it. We're justified by faith in Christ. Then he, he mentions this about coming to Christ. He says, but if, and this is, this is something that people were confused on. He said, but if, while we're seeking to be justified in Christ, in other words, if we come to Christ to be justified, we ourselves have been found to be sinners. We're sinners. Yeah, it looks, is Christ the minister of sin? May it never be. See, there were some people who were saying that if you just came to Christ, and when you looked to Christ for salvation, it showed you were sinners, so Christ caused it sin. Christ didn't cause sin. He said, when we've turned to Christ to be justified, we have to come to Christ to be justified. And when we do that, we recognize that we are sinners. Listen, why do you need a Savior if you're not a sinner? But Christ doesn't cause sin. Notice what he says. If while seeking to be justified in Christ, if, if I come to Christ to be saved, and then we found to be sinners, and we are because we see Christ and we see everything else. Is Christ the one that causes the sin? May it never be. He said, no, it's not true. No way. Now, let's stop for just a second. Because in this whole thing, he has said, you can't be justified by the law. You're justified by faith. Let's think about some things about the law. Okay, three things about the law. First of all, the law shows sin. In Romans 3, 19 and 20, it basically says that the law points out that we're sinners. When you look at the law and you look at the 613 commandments under the Mosaic law, if you just take the top 10 commandments and you look at law, you see that you're a sinner and you need a savior. 
The law shows sin. That's what it's for. In fact, look at it. it the Romans 3.20, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ephesians 2.1, we were dead in trespasses and sins. The word trespasses means open rebellion. When we look at the scripture and we look at the Bible, we look at the law, it says, you don't measure up. And we go, that's right, I don't. The law shows sin. There's a second part. The law actually causes sin. Romans chapter 7 verse 8 says the law actually causes you to sin. Paul says apart from the law, sin was dead, but when the law came, it causes sin. You say, what does that mean? That means any time there is a rule given to you because you have a flesh, a natural bent to sin, any time you're given a rule, you want to break that rule. Any time. Get out on the highway, speed limit 65, where are you going to go? You're going to go 66, 67. You say, well, I'm, I'm just locking in my cruise control at about 67. It says 65. Yeah, but I don't want to go 65. Okay? You walk by a construction place. There's a hole. It says, do not look through this hole. What are you going to do? You're going to say, nobody's going to tell me I can't look through a hole. Right? Anytime there is a law, our flesh says, don't tell me what to do. We break all laws. That's how we are. The law actually causes sin. There's a third thing, and this is something you may never thought of. The law actually points to Christ. The law shows us we are sinful and need a Savior. When we get to Galatians chapter 3, it actually says the law points us to Jesus Christ. And does. Every one of us in this room, why did you come to Christ as Savior? Why did you trust in Jesus Christ to give you eternal life? Because you knew you had fallen short, you were a sinner, and you were going to be separated from God. And you, and you knew that because of law, because of rules, because of the fact that you didn't measure up. And that's what the law does. Look what he says. But if, if while seeking to be justified in Christ, if I came to Christ by, by be justified by coming to Christ, and then I, I am a sinner, it's true, then does Christ actually, is he the minister of sin? Is he the one that causes sin? No, may it never be. Then he says something that if you're not following it, it, it may be a little bit hard to understand, but he says this. If I rebuild what I once destroyed, I prove myself to be a transgressor. What he's talking about is he says, if I go back up under the law, if I rebuild, if I put myself back under a law system. See, what the law does, God's law pinpoints our problems, but God's grace provides the solution. He basically says, if I put myself back under law, if I rebuild what I once destroyed, he's saying, I'm not under law now, but if I go back under law, I prove myself to be a transgressor. What happens when you go back and you look at the law? What do you find out about yourself when you look at law? To go back to law will show you your sins. It always does. And Paul says, if you're going to be justified by the law, first of all, you can't keep it. Second is, when you look at the law, you, you go back under a law system, it makes you a sinner again. It shows your sin because you're not perfect. Where does the law fit in? Notice what he says. For through the law... I died to the law so that I might live to God. Let me explain what that means. When we come to the law and we see that we can't keep it, we in a sense die to the law by saying, I can't use the law anymore. I must come to Christ for salvation. The law will not save me. So I die to the law and I come to Christ. And when you trust in Christ as Savior, in a sense, the way the Bible explains it, you're now died to the law and you're in Christ. You're not using the law anymore. So he says, for through the law, when I saw what the law said, I died to the law. I left the law so that I might live to God. To die to the law means that I come to Christ. The law shows my sin, points me to Christ. I use the law according to his purpose. Christ is the end of the law to all who believe. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Notice this. When we trust in Christ, we are placed in union with Christ. We died and rose again with Christ, with him. We died to the law so that we can live for Christ. You understand that when you trust in Jesus Christ as Savior, you died with him, you were buried with him, you rose again with him to a newness of life. You don't live the Christian life in law. You live the Christian life in grace. You live it as a, a walk of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit based on the Word of God. You're not under law. You have died to law so that you can live for Christ. We're going to explain more of it a little bit later, especially when you get over into chapters 5 and 6, and he talks about how to live the Christian life. See, the purpose is to live for God, not the law. And we'll see that. And next time, that's where he puts this verse. The very next verse says, I've been crucified with Christ. I died with Christ, right? 
And it's no longer I who live. It's not me who lives anymore, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life I live, I live by faith. Not by law, but by faith. I hope as we continue through this book that you won't miss because we're going to be talking about some really tough issues. There's some hard things in the book of Galatians. And what I want you to grasp today is that Paul says, wait a minute, you can't be justified by the law. Law actually brings death. The law shows you're a sinner. The law makes you sin. You can't be justified by the law because you can't keep it, but you're justified by faith. And if you come to Christ, some people will say, well, he makes you sin. No, he doesn't make me sin. If I, if I go back and put myself under law, it will always make me a sinner, but I died to the law so I can live to Christ. And this is some great things, and we're going to see more of that next time. Let me give you some applications, okay? Very simple. First one is this. Be clear on the good news message. It is a good news, not a good works. We're justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. It both, and, and the whole aspect of salvation and the whole aspect of the Christian life is by faith. By faith. It's so powerful. Uh, it, be careful not to nullify the grace of God. Verse 21, we're going to see it here in just a minute, but verse 21 says, I do not nullify the grace of God because if righteousness could come through the law, Christ died for nothing. Just make sure you're clear. So many people that we deal with, and listen, if you talk to people very often about the whole issue of salvation and going to heaven and having eternal life, there are going to be a lot of people who will say, oh, yeah, it's Jesus. Yeah, you need to come to Jesus. Jesus is the answer. However, you need to make sure you're baptized, or you need to join the church, or you need to make a public profession, or you need to give your life to Jesus, or you need to do this, or you need to do this, or you need to do this. And they've put law all in the whole thing. Salvation is by faith alone in Christ alone. By grace you are saved through faith, and that what? Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not of works, lest anyone should ever boast. Just remember that. It's that simple. Make sure you're clear. It's good news not good works. The second thing is understand the purpose of the law. It is not a means of justification. You cannot be declared right before God by law. Law shows sin. It shows you're wrong. It actually causes sin, and it points us to Christ. The law cannot be the means of rescuing us. It doesn't have power. The law, the law points out where you're wrong, but does not have the power to save you. Jesus is the Savior, not the law. There's a great truth. We're going to see it next time. I just mentioned it. It's Galatians 2.21. If the law could save, we don't need Jesus. Listen, if you could be good enough to get to God, if you could keep the rules and the laws, Jesus died for nothing. That's what Paul says at the end of the chapter. May we realize the purpose of the law, that it shows sins and points us to Christ. May we realize that we are saved justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law.